Hi, welcome to Curiosity Corner Live, celebrating football. I'm Kirsten Ellenbogen, President and CEO of Great Lakes Science Center. We are coming to you from Cleveland, Ohio, in the midst of the 2021 NFL Draft. Great Lakes Science Center is delighted to host the Draft Media Center and be part of the exciting fan experience. So in honor of the draft, we are dedicating a whole series of our YouTube show, Curiosity Corner Live, to the science of football, from the engineering of cleats to football tessellations and more. We are so honored to have Jeff Garcia join us for Curiosity Corner Live today. For the very few of you who don't already know him, Jeff is a former NFL quarterback, played college football at San Jose State University, and was a four-time Canadian Football League All-Star. Now, with the San Francisco 49ers, he made three Pro Bowl appearances and twice led the team to the playoffs. He set an all-time single-season passing yardage mark with 4,278 yards and is the only quarterback in their storied history to have three consecutive seasons of 3,000-plus passing yards. Not bad for a guy who was overlooked in the NFL draft, maybe because he wasn't tall enough, wasn't strong enough, wasn't fast enough. He beat those odds and went on to play with the Cleveland Browns, go Brownies, the Detroit Lions, and then led the Philadelphia Eagles to the playoffs before joining Tampa Bay Buccaneers and led them to the playoffs, making a fourth Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl appearance. Now, Jeff, you have utilized your professional accomplishments on the field and now off the field after your storied career to give back and support others. And I just want to mention a few of these amazing organizations, the Garcia Pass It On Foundation, the Hispanic Scholarship Fund, and through many other endeavors in your own work. It is such an honor to have you join Great Lakes Science Center for Curiosity Corner Live celebrating football. Well, thank you for having me, Kirsten. It's been... Uh an unbelievable life that I've been able to live, so many great experiences and opportunities and cities that I've gotten to experience because of the game of football. And uh, to be here today talking to someone from one of my former teams and to, to know that, hey, the great city of Cleveland's hosting the NFL draft and what great energy and enthusiasm and excitement has surrounded this draft because it's in such a great football town like Cleveland. Well, do you do you have a favorite memory from, from your time in Cleveland? You know, I wish there would have been a lot more great memories. Obviously, I met my wife in Cleveland. So because oh, of that, right. we have four beautiful children that we're raising. Uh, but as far as the football is concerned, you know, opening day. And we have to go back now. 2004 was the first game that I started for the Browns at home right there in Cleveland against the much hated Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I believe that's the only opening day game since the Browns have come back into the NFL that they've been able to win. And so we put it on the Baltimore Ravens that day. They have not won a opening day game since, which I'm sad to share that with you, and I hope it changes. <laughs> I hope it changes in 2021 with Baker Mayfield and the crew. But really, one of my favorite memories, and it's enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, is the 99-yard touchdown pass to Andre Davis against the Cincinnati Bengals, right there in the home stadium in front of the home crowd. It was a great day. I think I ended up throwing for four touchdown passes that day. But to be backed up on our own one-yard line. And we did a little rollout that was called and I hit Andre Davis about 40 plus yards down the field. And there he went, couldn't catch him. And that to see that happening and to watch it happen and see the crowd just burst into cheers and kind of welcome him to the end zone as he was flying to it uh, was a great experience. A lot of fun. You've got some great memories. Oh my goodness, uh, that's that's a great story, and I and I gotta say, you know, with with all respect to your wife, um, the most important one, of course, is that you met her in Cleveland. <laughs> That's that is a great Cleveland memory. I love that. Well, um, you're already getting me really excited, and I have to say, I I shared that quote in your bio 
um, that suggests that your career really defied some expectations. I know that was through some incredible hard work. Um, and I also know that science has played a role in shaping your professional career uh, as an athlete. Um, give us a little taste about the different ways that science might have played a role um, for you in the NFL. Yeah, well, you know, being an undersized, overlooked type of player, and really my entire life, it's always kind of been the underdog. I've always accepted mm. or taken on the underdog role, which I love being in that position, <laughs> to be honest with you. I love to be able to prove people wrong. But, you know, not being the biggest guy, I really had to work on my body, physicality, uh, to really make myself stronger, faster, do the necessary things that would allow my body to respond quicker, whether it was eating healthier, eating the right things, putting on good weight, not bad weight. So important to look at what I was consuming and putting into my body, but also just the work that I did in the weight room, the work that I did on the field, just the, uh, the whole physicality of how to improve your response time, how to improve your quickness within the pocket, how to improve your overall strength so that I can make those throws to the sideline that were not able to just be somewhat lollipops, but you had to put some, <laughs> put some drive behind it, get some speed, some velocity behind it. So there's a lot of, lot of science when you talk about just uh, speed, uh, when you talk about force, when you talk about impact in the game of football. And I try to share that with my kids today. I have two boys that want to play football, that are going to play tackle football eventually because they want to do it, not because I want them to do it. But I'm going to support them and encourage them. But I also tell them, well, you better start eating more. You need to get bigger. You need to get a little stronger. You better start developing some strength, doing some push-ups, doing some necessary things that are going to give you size and speed and strength and all those things to help you compete at a higher level. And, you know, for professional athletes today, especially the nutrition side of the game has become a major, major focus as to how to gain some sort of advantage, what they put into their bodies so that they optimize the output, the performance, the energy levels, all those things that you have to have when you play this game, you have to be at the highest of levels. You're playing against the best out there. There's somebody right behind you that's chomping on your heels, trying to take your spot. So however they can look scientifically to gain an advantage, they're looking into it. They truly are probably more than ever before, just because of how things have evolved, how they've developed, even the workouts have changed. Quarterbacks aren't doing as much of the heavy lifting, the old school lifting. They're look, working more with bands and rotational type stuff to gain strength in their shoulders, in their elbows, in their forearms, different things that are going to help them to stay not only healthy, but competitive at a high level. Yeah. Uh, well, it sounds like such a range. Now, I, I, um, a, a slight diversion, right? Because you're you're talking about new players in the NFL. Um, we have a very new player just drafted this weekend, uh, and there's a lot of talk about a very special number that was your number five. Um, reflect a moment uh, and and explain to our audience today importance of number five and uh, how you're passing that on to Trey Lance. Yeah, to me, it was, a, it was a number that I wore in college, first and foremost. Mm. And uh, it wasn't necessarily one that I selected. It was handed to me in college. <laughs> it was like, you're either five or I don't know what other number we have for you. But at that time, I accepted it. But I kind of linked it to the representa representation of my family. I have two sisters, my parents. We were the Garcia Five. You know, and it was just kind of a number that kind of tied into – Hey, my family's a unit of five, and now I'm number five on the playing field. And and for me, it really became a number that I, um, you know, I became very fond of. Obviously, it was five years in, with the San Francisco 49ers that I donned the number five. And yes, there have been players since that time that have worn number five, but nobody at such a high level or a high expectation of what they have now with Trey Lance being the number three pick coming out of North Dakota State 
and number five being his number. And for me, look, I understand. Hey, fans have asked, what do you think about Trey wearing number five and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, you know what? I don't own the number, first of all. It's not <laughs> retired. So it's not like he needs my approval. But you know what? If there's ever a guy that I would love to see don the number and represent it uh, with humility, with uh, great intention, with great focus and dedication, kind of an overachiever himself, kind of an underdog in the sense of being overlooked, coming out of high school, wasn't looked at by the major colleges, went to a lower division to play his college football. And, uh, you know, I think the guy's got a chip on his shoulder. I think he has the attitude like, I'm going to prove something to people, but he's going to do it in a positive way. He doesn't use it in a negative sense. He uses it as positive fuel to his fire. I think that the kid is a remarkable young athlete that has a tremendous uh, future ahead of him. And if he can make or continue to make number five great within the San Francisco 49ers, I give him my blessing. Love it. I love it. Well, all right. You said uh, positive fuel to the fire. Uh, that really makes me think about what you've been doing since leaving the NFL, right? I mean, you've, you're not slowing down. Talk a bit about what you've been doing since retirement. I, I know science has played a role in this, um, and I know people are interested in hearing. It really has, and, and more so recently than ever. I mean, I took some time to try to figure out where my passions were going to lead me. I went into coaching. I was coaching a lot of young kids in my area. I live in the Southern California, San Diego area. I started coaching young kids, young quarterbacks, little junior high and high school kids. And uh, then it led to actually coaching in the NFL. I coached one year for the St. Louis Rams, the last year that they were in St. Louis. But I realized that that was taking me away from my own family, my own mm -hmm. four kids. And as a dad, that's so important for me to be a part of their lives and to be a part of their uh, experiences, whether it be through sport or activities or school plays, whatever that may be, I don't want to miss on any moments in their precious life. That's such a short, quickly moving time period. And, and for me, uh, coming back and just reconnecting as a dad, being a dad first and uh, being involved. Hey, I coach their teams. I try to help them with science from school, but I'm not real good at that. You know, they, I was asking them today, so what kind of projects, you know, hey, the volcanoes erupting, you know, those seem like fun ones, right? Hey, learning about the solar system, obviously. Uh, who can make mold or, uh, yeah, mold. <laughs> who can grow yeah. mold baskets, right? Some of the projects that they've had in school. But for me, lately, more recently, I got involved with a great company called Pharmanex. And they're in the nutraceuticals. And what they've developed is an S3 biophotonic scanner. And what this scanner does is it measures the carotenoid levels in your body through a scan through the palm of your hand. And I could demonstrate it to you. This is actually the machine right here. It's about the size of a football. And uh, you log on to an iPad like this. And it has the scanner uh, connected to it. And we scan through the palm of our hands. And it gives us, basically, if I show you this little reading, this is from 10,000 on this side all the way to 90,000. That's the antioxidant levels that this biophotonic scanner will give you as to your nutritional level that you are bring it into your body through fruits and vegetables, number one, and also through vitamins and supplements. And what Pharmanex has developed through scientifically, through scientists going through R&D and developing some of the best products out there as far as vitamins and supplements go. And so for me, where health has always been a big um, part of my life, health and nutrition, it was a natural, natural transition for me to uh, really gravitate toward what they have in kind of a med tech device, but a patented state of the art uh, cutting edge to help people identify what they're lacking in putting in their bodies. And as you know, 
antioxidants help battle the free radicals that are attacking our cells. And so the higher antioxidant levels are in your body, the better you are from a health standpoint of fighting things that are causing cancer, causing diabetes, causing heart problems, all those different things that are attacking us from within, boosting our antioxidant levels can really help fight those free radicals. And so this is a measurement that gives us an idea as to what sort of nutrition or how are we living currently and what are we putting into our bodies? So there's so much to unpack here. Uh, this is this is really exciting what you're talking about. And and that device that you have in your hand, I, I have to say, right? I mean, in that is in some ways, you, you know, a, a variation on what we've done with light and technology for centuries, right? And and my background, I've done a, a bunch of microscopy. I used to work with an electron microscope that was about the size of this room that I'm sitting in, this little room here, right? And so to see that small device in your hand is really exciting. And I and I want to explain a little bit about this, right? I mean, photonics means that you're harnessing light, right? That's that's all that means. And so when we do biophotonics, what we're looking at is light and actual living cells or tissue, right? So what this technology is allowing you to do is to use light to image or measure in this case, or in some of the new tech uh, adaptations of biophytonics, actually change cells or tissue without disturbing any of the healthy cells or tissue around it, right? Um, I know you have a personal passion around improving cancer treatment. I got my start at the Michigan Cancer Foundation in Detroit, um, and I worked in a lab uh, that diagnosed cancer, a pathology lab. So what we used to have to do, right, and I'm going to tell this little story because it, it really underscores how amazing that piece of technology in your hand is. We used to take um, a, an actual piece of tissue, right? So that's the that's the first difficulty. There is we couldn't do that with the patient standing there. We actually had to invasively take a tiny piece of tissue. Right. Um, so then you have that dead tissue. I had to embed it in plastic. I had to uh, use heavy metals uh, to really get at imaging what I needed to see in the cells. And then I went into a, a dark room in the basement uh, with a machine about the size of this room um, to get an image of it. You take all those photos, uh, which sometimes in the process you'd ruin the sample as you were using uh, the electrons to do that. Right. And and then you'd run around and you'd develop the photo, bring that back into the lab, bring that to the doctor actually doing the diagnosis, and then they could really dive into the detail of the cancer that they were looking at. The kind of technology now that we have with biophotonics bio means that you can do the imaging and measurements right there with the patient in front of you. You're not damaging things as you're doing it. Um, it, it's really harnessing light and transforming microscopy, not just as a diagnosis tool, but also now the latest biophotonics are used in treatment. And in the example you're giving, right, it's using it as a diagnosis to tell you what you should be doing to keep your body healthy. So uh, that's a massive piece of technology you've got there. And it's, it's cool. such a great example of changes uh, that have been happening in science and technology. Absolutely. No, it is really great. I mean, to be able to open my eyes to the first time I scanned and believing that I really try to eat healthy, I try to put the right things in my body, but then to scan at a level of 17,000 really showed that something is not right. I'm missing out on something. And as we know, over the years, and I heard the comparison just recently, that today, in comparison with an orange from like the 1950s, we would have to eat 20 oranges to equal the value that we would have gotten out of an orange in, 19, in the 1950s or 60s, just because of the development and the erosion and the problems that the pesticides, everything that goes into our food today and how it's breaking down really the value of the fruits and vegetables, even the stuff that we look at as what should be our healthy alternatives, they're not as good, they're not as strong nutrient-wise 
as they once were. So how do we supplement that? And for me, I always just went to a local store and bought vitamins or supplements off the shelf. Well, we don't really know the quality of those vitamins and supplements either. And so to really then start to put something into my body that is scientifically based, that is performed and, and even accepted. Uh, one of the things that's so great about this company is that they are the first brand that has been approved to sponsor the U.S. Olympic team for nutraceuticals because of their innovative six-step approach of developing products that are safe, effective, of a, a highest quality and exceed government requirements, all claims are supported by scientific evidence. So as we know, the NFL, the Olympics, these bodies uh, have the highest standard of rules as to what you can put in your body, what your athletes can put into their bodies. And so to now have a pharmaceutical grade vitamin and supplement to help you nutritionally substi basically substitute what you're lacking in your diet because we can't get enough of the fruits and vegetables in us to raise our levels. Now that's where quality vitamins and supplements can help, help kind of bring that gap, close that gap of what we need in our body. Things are so different now for for professional athletes. It's it's just amazing um, the way science and technology and and all of this food science you're describing has changed. Um, I, I do want to leave us. Uh, I think viewers have probably heard and seen um, family for both of us uh, in the background, and and I know family um, dogs. We got it all. You know, it, you know it, it. This is this is uh, this is life. Um, this is a Zoom life. Uh, when you're thinking about advice, I mean, let's think of like a high school student, right? Um, they're thinking about a professional career. Uh, they've, they've got some access to science out there. Like, what's your advice? What do you, you want to leave someone with today in thinking about how they're going to use science to really have a professional athletic career um, that, that, that makes the best out of things? Well, as you know, it is so difficult to reach the top of that mountain, so to speak. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's a less than 1% that a high school student would make it into, whether it be Major League Baseball, basketball, soccer, football, the, the major sports that are out there. Um, but from the standpoint of what they have access to today as compared to when we were growing up and what we had access to, there's so much more knowledge, so much more expertise in the area of sciences as to how to improve your body. Like I, what I spoke about earlier, NFL players, all athletes at major levels today have better insight as to what to put into their body, how to train the methodology behind training and really where science has taken that as to what works best for you? It's no longer the heavy bench press that you need to be doing in order to optimize what you do for your sport. It varies in ranges for everybody. And you can't just plug one person into it and it works for everyone. It's really now become a science as to how it's really built around the nutrition, the, the physical activity around the individual player. And mm -hmm. each player is going to have a little bit of a variation that's different than the next player. Hey, what an offensive lineman does for an NFL football team is going to be different than what a wide receiver would do or what a defensive back would do. What they put in the bo their body, how they fuel their body, how they maintain their weight. All those things are so critical. And so for a high school student, he has access to all of that to really get a jump start. First of all, you got to have some grit. You have to have some tenacity. You have to have some work ethic, some drive, and some dedication. There's also a little bit of luck involved. Hey, as we've seen these last couple years, the unfortunate closure of sports for high school seniors to not be able to play your final year of high school because of the lockdown and maybe lose out on recruiting opportunities that were either coming your way or could have come your way. 
And now what do you do? You find yourself in a place to where you got to kind of figure out a new route in, almost kind of like what I did in going to the Canadian Football League before I even had a sniff into the National Football League. And so because of that, because of what's gone on, these kids really have to be focused on what can I do? What can I put into my body? How can I train my body to get the best results out of it? And mm. you know what? They're fortunate because there's a lot of information out there, but it's important to be able to decipher what's good information and what's bad information. If I'm a young player, I'm going to look at the pro guys and I'm going to tap into, hey, what does Tom Brady do on a daily basis? How much water does he drink? What types of food does he eat? Does he stay away from red meats or whatever the case may be? But these guys have certain ways of living from a health standpoint that could be helpful and mm -hmm. can help young kids. I'm doing it every single day, trying to get my kid to eat some green vegetables. You know, <laughs> and that's one of the biggest battles in my home is to get in and I'll, I'll scan them all. And maybe that's what I need to do is create the competition within the house as to <laughs> whose antioxidant levels are the highest. That means they're eating the best foods. And so right there, you have a way to create some competition that's going to benefit your youth. Love it. Well, Jeff, I know folks are going to want to follow you, stay in touch. Um, what's the best way to follow what you're doing? The best way to follow me is on social media. You can reach me on Instagram at Jeff Garcia QB5. And you can reach me on Twitter at Jeff Garcia JGFA. Awesome. And stay in touch with us at Great Lakes Science Center through this YouTube channel. Follow us. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or take a look at the very latest on our website at greatscience.com. Jeff Garcia, so honored to have you with us today. Stay curious, Cleveland. Absolutely. Thank you. And we have a lot of family in Cleveland. So the kids, I'm going to bring them through the Science Center for sure. All right. We can't wait. Thank you. Bye.